the Kraft Food Company presents Willard Waterman as the Great Gildersleeve. <laughs> Brought to you partially transcribed by the Kraft Foods Company. Kraft, makers of the one and only Miracle Whip salad dressing. We say one and only because there just isn't any other salad dressing like Miracle Whip. Miracle Whip is different, and it tastes different. Miracle Whip tastes so good, it's become the most popular salad dressing ever created. More Miracle Whip is sold than the next 20 leading brands of salad dressing combined. Try it. Make your salad better tasting with the one and only Miracle Whip. When the average boy makes up his mind he wants something, he can be quite a pest around the house. When the great Gildersleeve's nephew, Leroy, wants something, he's not only a pest around the house, but he follows his uncle wherever he goes. He was upstairs flipping, prepping. <laughs> then he went skipping across the street to call on Miss Winthrop. Yeah? I guess I'll follow him over there. Leroy, Miss Winthrop just got back from a summer vacation. Your uncle's got to catch up on his courting. Okay, I'll just sit in the parlor with him and let him court. <laughs> <laughs> I ought to see Babs anyway. Why don't you bring Babs over here and play records or something and let her mother and Mr. Gillsleeve have a parlor over there? No, nah, I hate to do it to Unc, but I gotta pester him. What you after now, boy? Well, gosh, all summer Unc's been promising to help me get a permit to drive a car. And here's school starting and I don't have it yet. Well, maybe he thinks you're not quite ready for that. A lot of sensible kids my age have driver's permits. That lets you drive a car when you're with somebody else. I'm going to hang around Nunk and his date until he gets so sick of me, he'll agree to anything to get rid of me. Oh, Mr. Gillsleeve, his happy twosome is about to become a gruesome threesome. <laughs> well, Paula, it's good to have you back home. Oh, thank you, Rock Morton. It's good to be home. Babs could hardly wait to get back in school. I can hardly wait to get back in school either, teacher. <laughs> Where do you want me to sit this year? Right here on the couch? By you? Oh, if you like. Yeah. <laughs> you have a nice tan, Paula. You have to spend a lot of time sunbathing. Oh, I practically lived on the beach. Took a lot of pictures. Well, do you have the pictures? Love to look at snapshots. Yes, I have them right here. Great, let's see them. I like the bathing suits that appear. Oh, then you'll be interested in this picture. Oh? This is Uncle Jasper on the beach. Oh. <laughs> is that really your Uncle Jasper, or is that a bathing suit hanging on a limb? <laughs> Oh, Well, the heck with pictures. Let's enjoy being alone together. It isn't often we get away from Babs and Leroy. Mm -hmm. Maybe we'll be more successful this year. Why, George, I sneaked out on Leroy tonight. I just had to see you alone. I wanted to see you, too. <laughs> there were times this summer when I missed you very much, Throckmorton. Well, it was a dull summer for me, too. No girl. I should have been there. Evenings were quite chilly. I'd light a log in the fireplace. I'd sit all alone listening to the pounding of the surf. No fooling? Uh, Paula. Hmm? It's anything but chilly in here. But I wonder if we shouldn't light a fire. Why not? It's early autumn. Oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. <laughs> what an evening this is going to be. Oops. Doorbell. I wonder who that is. Excuse me, Throckmorton. Hurry back, Paula. You'll just leave. She missed you. You're irresistible. Especially when they don't see you. <laughs> Why, Leroy. Come on, Winthrop. What's he doing here? May I come in? Well, of course. Oh, no. Hi, Uncle. Are you here? Am I here? 
I believe Babs is upstairs, Leroy. I'll call her. Oh, that's okay. I'll sit and talk to you two until she comes down. Oh, Leroy. Oh, I don't mind waiting. I got all night. <laughs> well, I never believed in girls keeping boys waiting. There's one thing about you, Paula. When I have a date, you don't keep me waiting. Well, you two are older. You're getting anxious. <laughs> <laughs> Leroy, I'll run up and tell Babs you are here. Leroy, I didn't know you were coming over. Oh, I didn't have anything else to do. And I thought it might be a good time to ask you when I'm going to get my driver's permit. Leroy, this is no time to push for that. Now, when Babs comes down, you two scram. Gosh, we don't have any place to go. But if I had my driver's permit... Young man, I... I'm terribly sorry, Leroy, but Babs is asleep. She went to bed early. Well, good. Nothing to be sorry about. Heck no. I'll just sit here and chat with you two. Oh, my God. <laughs> what were you talking about when I came in? Oh, we were just talking about things that happened this summer. Yeah? What happened? Well, I was just telling Paula it was very dull for me with no girlfriend around. Leroy. <laughs> What's Ron Morton been up to, Leroy? If he dares mention Gloria McKinley and Hogan Brothers. Gosh, I guess I said something wrong. Leroy, let's watch it. Well, look, if I had my driver's permit, I wouldn't be hanging around so much, saying the wrong thing. This is beginning to sound interesting. Now, Gloria. I mean, Paula. What did you call me? <laughs> now who's saying the wrong thing? <laughs> Paula, don't let Leroy get you confused. Let's talk about something else. Say, the trees are changing color. Let's drive out in the country tomorrow evening and watch them change. I'll have Bertie pack a nice supper to eat in the moonlight. Oh, I'd enjoy that. Hmm, Babs and I would enjoy that. Leroy, I mean a supper for two. Gosh, Uncle, I hope you don't think I'm trying to tag along and maybe say the wrong thing again. But if I had my driver's permit... Young man, are you making a nuisance of yourself just to get your driver's permit? Well... Because if you are, I have only one thing to say. Yeah? We'll get it first thing in the morning. <laughs> You did? Yeah, this morning he's taking me down to get my driver's permit. Boy, I can't wait to get behind the wheel. <laughs> beep, beep. Well, Leroy, now that you're going to get the permit, are you sure you know what you have to do to get it? What do you mean, Bertie? You just don't go down there and tell the law you want a permit. Well, I know. It ain't just driving a car. you got rules to learn. Oh, heck, I know the rules. Don't turn around in the middle of a block. Don't run through a red light. There's nothing to it, Bertie. Well, you wouldn't get Bertie down there. I'd be too nervous. Like my sister's husband, he went down to get his driver's license, and you should have seen the list of questions. Yeah? And when they gave him that driving test, oh, man! Oh, I can pass that. Well, you think you can till you get in that car and the law gets in right with you. Yeah, but... He tells you to do things you're supposed to do, and he also tells you to do some things you ain't supposed to do. And if you don't do the things you're supposed to do and do the things you ain't supposed to do, you're done. <laughs> yeah, I, I think I know what to do. Of course, you may not get as nervous as my brother-in-law. They were telling him to put out his hand to turn right and put up his hand to turn left. Put down his hand, don't turn. He had so many hands signaling, he didn't have any left to keep on the steering wheel. <laughs> he didn't get his license, huh, Bertie? He didn't need no license. He sold his car. <laughs> Down for your license? I'm not so sure I want one. Come on, Leroy. You're lagging behind. Gosh, Jack, I don't think I'll take my driver's test today. No, Leroy, you're just worried because of what Bertie said. Yeah. By George, I'm going to see that you get your driver's permit today. I'm tired of having you hound me for it. Following me around, sitting in on all my dates. You're right, Unc. I've been a sneaky little kid. 
I think you should send me home and make me forget all about the driver's permit. No, Leroy. Gosh, what if I don't pass? All the kids will laugh at me. You'll pass, all right. Anybody with average intelligence can pass a driver's test. Let's go inside. Okay. But I don't know if I've got average intelligence. I've got a D in history, you know. History has nothing to do with driving a car. Now step up to the window. Okay. Good morning. Good morning, officer. Good morning. Uh, this is my nephew, Leroy Forrester. I brought him down to get a driver's permit. Well, he's pretty small, isn't he? Yeah, small for his size. But he's within the age limit. Aren't you, my boy? Oh, yeah. All right, let's fill out a little form here. You're sponsoring him? Oh, yes, indeed. And what is your name? What's my name? Well, I just happen to be the city water commissioner, that's all. Occupation water commissioner. Now, what's your name? Oop. I'm Throckmorton P. Gildersleeve. And I can see you're new around here. And very impertinent for a rookie policeman. I'm a sergeant. <laughs> well, you're impertinent for a rookie sergeant. Oh, oh, don't antagonize him. He's going to give me the test. Oh, man. Oh, young fellow, here's your written traffic examination. Just answer the questions. You'll find pen and ink over there on the table. Wow, 30 questions. Oh, can you help me? Oh, I'm afraid not, my boy. You're the one who's taking the examination, not me. But be calm the way I am. Don't be too concerned about it, young man. You can miss five and still pass. I can? Then all you have to do is get in a car with an officer and show him you can drive. Sure, go ahead, my boy. Nothing to be upset about. Why, well, I could take that test blindfolded. Okay, I'll, I'll try. Yeah, the boy's a little nervous, Sergeant. But I guess all youngsters are when they first come down here. It isn't just the beginners. Some of the old-timers get a little nervous, too. Yeah, that's ridiculous. Wouldn't bother me. Now then, since you'll be responsible for your nephew, I'll have to see your driver's license. You have one, of course. You bet I've got one. You're right here in my wallet. Yeah, there you are. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, I drive all the time. I'd be a fool not to have a driver's license. Well, Commissioner, I won't be so impertinent as to call you a fool, but you don't have a driver's license. I don't? It expired two months ago. I... <laughs> it did? Of course, as you told your nephew so many times, there's nothing to be nervous about. No, yeah, no, of course not. Who's nervous? Uh, let's see. Uh, lunch hour coming up. You can take your driver's test at 2 o'clock this afternoon. Yeah, well, there's no hurry. I'll drop in one of these days. If you want to drive your car, Commissioner, you'll take it today. Now, don't get pushy, Junior G-Man. <laughs> Junior G-Man? Yeah, I'll come back at 2 and take your old written test. Fine. But your license having lapsed, you'll also have to take a driving test. Yeah, all right, I'll take that, too. Anything to get you out of my hair. Who do I have to see to prove I can drive? Me. Oh! <laughs> the Great Gildersleeve will be back in just a minute. The Bridge Club was meeting at Ella O'Leary's, and Ella got nervous and made quite a slip. She trumped Betsy's ace. But, ah, saved her face with a luscious big salad and Miracle Whip. <laughs> Quite a poem, huh? Well, you know, a salad made with Miracle Whip tastes so good, it can make you forget even something as important as a trumped ace. Miracle Whip has a simply delicious flavor. A wonderful, lively, teasing flavor. And it's a flavor that's truly different, one no other salad dressing in the world has. That's because Miracle Whip is made from a secret recipe created by Kraft. A recipe that gives you a salad dressing with the best qualities of old-fashioned boiled dressing and fine, rich mayonnaise. And Miracle Whip is blended with care a very special way to give it just the smooth, creamy, thick texture you want. Here is a truly superb salad dressing. But don't take my word for it. Try it yourself tomorrow. Try it on fruit salads, vegetable salads, in meat and seafood salads, too. One taste, and you'll agree with the millions who have made Miracle Whip the most popular salad dressing ever created. In fact, Miracle Whip is so popular, it actually outsells the next 20 leading brands of salad dressing combined. Make better tasting salads. Make them with the one and only Miracle Whip salad dressing. <laughs> Well,
Well, when the great Gildersleeve took Leroy down for his first driver's permit, he assured his nervous nephew that there was nothing to it. Then he discovered that his own driver's license had expired and the shoe is on the other foot. And it's beginning to pinch. Hmm. Feet hurt. That badge happy sergeant made me leave my car at the police station and walk all the way home. You gotta go back at two o'clock and take the test, huh, Unc? Yeah, if I can make it. Too bad you had to run in with that police sergeant. How did Long swell with him when he gave me the driving test? Great. He said I was a very intelligent little kid. Good. Couldn't believe you're my uncle. <laughs> oh? I guess you're pretty proud of me, passing all the tests, huh? Yeah, yes, I am. I'm very proud of you, my boy. Keen. Now I won't be pestering you for my driver's permit. I won't be always hanging around when you got a date. Just think, tonight you and Mrs. Winthrop can go on your picnic all alone. Well... Just you two eating the hard-boiled eggs in the moonlight. <laughs> Quiet, Leroy. I'm studying the questions on this traffic examination. Lucky for you, I brought a set home, huh, Hunk? Well, naturally, I know the answers, but it doesn't hurt to cram a little before the exam. Oh, there's nothing to it, Unc. Like you told me, anybody with average intelligence can pass a driver's test. Yes, yes. Well, there's nothing to get upset about. Don't be nervous. Be calm, like you told me. Hey, Leroy, stop telling me what I told you. Okay. <laughs> hey, oh, boy, come on, Unc. Not just yet, my boy. Don't you want to drink with you, please? Well, I'm not hungry, Bertie. You? Not hungry? Besides, I have to be at the police station at 2 o'clock. Police station? Mr. Gilsleeve, are you in trouble? Not necessarily, Bertie. Of course, I do have to go down and renew my driving license. Well, then, you're not in trouble. Well, I have to answer a lot of questions and then prove to them I can drive. You can drive good enough to get by. Right. I've seen you do it. You're not in trouble. Well, I had a little brush with the sergeant down. Oh, you've tangled with him before, but you never got in trouble. Yeah, I'm afraid I got a little excited and called this sergeant a rookie cop. So you called the sergeant a rookie. You're not in trouble. Yeah, but, Bertie, this sergeant happens to be the one who's giving me the driving test. Uh-oh. You're in trouble. <laughs> Some of these questions are sticklers. On the way down, I think I'll stop in and talk to Pete. He's the most cautious driver I know. He'll know the answers. Hello, Petey. Yeah, hello, Mr. Gillespie. <laughs> what can I do for you today? Well, first of all, you might give me a cigar. Give you one or sell you one? <laughs> you know what I mean, Petey. Here's the money. Yeah, well... There's nothing like a good cigar after lunch, eh? Hey? You do want a good cigar, don't you? Naturally. And then drop another dime on the counter. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Petey. Might as well spend it on cigars. Can't spend it on gasoline. Okay. My car's at the police station, Petey. You don't say. What did it do? <laughs> Nothing. Well, then I'd get it a good lawyer. Peavy, my driver's license expired. Oh, you're the one who needs a lawyer. No, confound it, I don't need a lawyer. You gonna plead the case yourself? Peavy, stop and let me talk. Yes, yeah, go ahead and tell <laughs> I'm on my way down to take my driver's test. I thought you could give me a little help on some of these questions. Well, Mr. Gildersleeve, I think Mrs. Peavy would be the one to ask. She does most of the driving. Well, Peavy, whenever you two go out, Mrs. Peavy is in the back seat. That's what I say. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Of course, I know the answers to most of these questions, but here's one that has me confused. If you're going up a narrow mountain road and meet a car coming down, would you pull over and stop or continue up the mountain? I wouldn't do either one. Steve, you'd have to do one or the other. No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't dare take my car up in the mountain. <laughs> oh, my goodness. But to answer your question, any driver with average intelligence knows the car coming downhill has the right of way. Well, that's the way I had it marked. 
And then why are you marking it again? <laughs> all right, Petey. I'll admit I came to you because you're such a careful driver. You know all the answers. Consequently, you never break a traffic regulation. Oh, thank you. you know, I've got to be going, Petey. Uh, by the way, Mr. Gildersleeve, when you go back to the police station, will you give them the $5? Dollars? It's for parking by a fire plug. <laughs> parking by a fire plug? You know better than that. Yeah, yeah, but Mrs. Peavy's fired a bargain sale, and when she says park, I park. <laughs> oh, my goodness. See you later, Peavy. <laughs> my George, I'll show this uppity sergeant. Yeah, I'll bet he's never seen anybody take the written test so fast. Of course, all I had to do was copy the answers off my sheet and the one he gave me. <laughs> no, he's reading all those complicated questions again. Yeah, yeah, that does it. Sergeant? Yes, Commissioner. Take a look at this. Very well. Now, let's see. Oh, there's no use spending a lot of time checking. You won't find anything wrong. Quiet, please. I'm fascinated. <laughs> now that you've never seen anything like my paper. <laughs> no, no, I haven't. In all my experience, I've never seen anything like it. You haven't, uh... Out of 30 questions, you've missed only 28. What? <laughs> what? That's impossible. I copied the answers off my other sheet. I mean... Commissioner, I... we're prepared for that. We have three different sets of questions. What? What a sneaky way to run a traffic department. <laughs> Commissioner. Did I pass this time, Sergeant? Barely. Good. Anybody with average intelligence can pass the written test if they'll take the time to analyze the question. I wish people would stop stressing average intelligence when they talk to me. Uh, this is your car, isn't it? Yeah, this is it. Uh, let's see how you are behind the wheel. Well, hello, Officer Dolan. Whoop, Judge Hooker. Hello, Judge. What are you doing, escorting this vagrant to the edge of town? <laughs> All right, Judge, I'm taking a driver's test. Well, this should be interesting. Officer, do you mind if I climb in the back seat and go along? There's no law against it. Well, I'm against it. Look, I have work to do. Let's go. Yeah, hop in, Gilda. Judge, if you must come along, be quiet. Don't make me nervous. Now, Gildy, I won't say a word unless, of course, I see you doing something wrong. Start the motor, Commissioner. What does the water commissioner have in the gas tank? Water? <laughs> Judge. Commissioner. Yes? You could try turning on the ignition. I... Ignition? Oh, Yes. <laughs> Just warming up the starter. Gildy, when you pull away from the curb, you hold out your hand. I know that. Well, do it. I'm doing it. Now make a left turn at the next intersection, Commissioner. Yes, sir. I mean, you're all right. Gildy, are you sure you should make a left turn? Sometimes they ask you to do things you aren't supposed to do. I know that, Judge, but he isn't going to catch me. Well, let's see what the traffic sign says. Judge, I can read the sign. It says no U-turn. So you can make a left turn. Go ahead, make your left turn. Confounded Horace. Oop, past the intersection. Yes, you did. Well, <laughs> better to be safe than sorry. Now let's see if we can make a right turn. You mean right here in the middle of the block? <laughs> if I were you, I'd wait until I got to the corner. Yes, sir. <laughs> Gildy, I'm surprised at you. Horace, stop breathing down the back of my neck. Now, let's see. For a right turn, stick my arm out the window, hold up my hand. Here we go on the turn. Commissioner, stop waving at the people across the street. He isn't waving, he's trembling. <laughs> Judge, if I fail this test, I'm going to sue you. Now, Gildy, if you fail today, you can take it again tomorrow. I can't fail. I have a date with Paula tonight. We're picnicking. Well, let's break up this picnic. I want to see how well you can park. Oh, I'm good at parking. There's a spot. Well, there. Quiet, 
Judge, I'm parking. But I think you should know. I know how to back into a parking space. Quiet. But, Gilder. Quiet, Judge. All right. There, Sergeant. What do you think? Look out my window and tell me what you think. Uh, you went. Zeke, fire plug. <laughs> There'll be a moon tonight, Ross Morton. Yeah. This is living. <laughs> Nothing like the fall season. Leaves turning, riot of color. Look at those pumpkins over there in the field. Mm, the countryside is gorgeous. I'm so glad you thought of this drive. Well, I use my noodle once in a while. And you were sweet to invite Leroy and Babs to come with us. Yeah, that's me, sweet. Of course, it came as a little surprise to me. After you raved last night about not wanting Leroy to always tag along. Yeah. Say, here's an intersection coming up. Stop sign. When we come to a stop sign, we put out our hand and stop. I know, Uncle. Who's got the driver's license? You or me? <laughs> will be with us again in just 30 seconds. Do you like chicken salad? Then try this unusually delicious variation. Add drained canned pineapple chunks to that salad. It's wonderful. And to be sure your pineapple chicken salad is at its best, make it with a truly fine salad dressing. Miracle Whip salad dressing. Miracle Whip has a perfect peppy flavor all its own, a flavor you won't find in any other salad dressing. Get a jar of delicious, different-tasting Miracle Whip tomorrow. See what wonderful things it can do for your salad. The one and only Miracle Whip salad dressing. Morning, Miss Gilsleeve. Good morning, Betty. Did you have a nice time last night? We sure did, didn't we, Uncle? Oh, yes. Great. There's your bacon and eggs, Leroy. What you gonna have, Miss Gilsleeve? Uh, just bring me some carrots, Bertie. Carrots? Yep. I'm going to sharpen up my eyesight. I've joined the Ground Observer Corps. See those planes better when they go over. Why don't you stick some carrots in your ears? Maybe you can hear them better. <laughs> Only kidding, Uncle. Well, I should think so. The Ground Observer Corps is a mighty important thing. They help the radar boys to watch for unidentified planes. Now, folks... This is a vital service that you can do for your country right now. The Ground Observer Corps needs volunteers, men and women, all ages. It only takes a few hours a week, and by George, you'll be doing a big part in helping to guard our country. Phone or write to your nearest civil defense center. Don't put it off. Do it now. Good night. See you next week. Great Gildersleeve is played by Willard Waterman. The show is written by John Elliott and Andy White. It is partially transcribed. Included in the cast are Walter Tetley, Jean Bates, Lillian Randolph, Bob Bruce, Earl Ross, and Dick Legrand. Musical compositions by Jack Meekin. This is John Easton saying good night for the Kraft Foods Company, makers of the famous line of Kraft quality food products. Be sure to listen in next Wednesday and every Wednesday for the further adventures of the Great Gildersleeve. There are two kinds of delicious craft prepared mustard. Mild craft mustard, so smooth and delicately spiced, and craft mustard with snappy horseradish added. And whichever you prefer, remember, when you add a little mustard, you add a lot of tang. Try it on cold sandwiches, hamburgers, frankfurters, and cold cuts. Enjoy the wonderful sauces you can make for hot meat and vegetable courses with craft prepared mustard. Keep both kinds on hand and keep the whole family happy. Get mild craft mustard and craft mustard with snappy horseradish added at your favorite food store.
tonight, You Bet Your Life returns to NBC.